Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and I'll be reading verses 23 through 25 and this is what it says. By faith Moses when he was born was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith Moses when he had grown up refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, breathe on it that what goes on here may lift your name higher and give gratitude, glory, thanks, praise to you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. For those who have been Braves fans for a long, long time, you remember the name Brett Butler. Brett Butler grew up in the, the Braves farm system and the Braves did with Brett Butler what they often did with any player that showed great tr promise. They traded him to another team where he became a superstar. <laughs> but Brett Butler was not one that you'd look at and you'd say, well, I'll bet he'll be a superstar. As a matter of fact, it's usual that the superstars are highly courted after, highly sought after as soon as they leave high school. Well, that wasn't the case for Brett Butler. As a matter of fact, there was no Division I college that wanted him enough to give him a scholarship. He ended up playing at an NAIA school, a very small school. And when he told his coach at graduation that he wanted to play in the major leagues, his coach said clearly, you're too small. Brett Butler was five feet nine inches tall and weighed 156 pounds. Not exactly what you would think would be a great major league player. He was drafted in the 23rd round and if anyone is familiar with baseball you know if someone's drafted in the 23rd round they're lucky to play one season. Well Brett Butler didn't just play one season in the majors he played 16 seasons in the majors. And when it's a, a great accomplishment to steal 20 bases in a season, Brett Butler stole 30 bases or more for 12 seasons. Many people would consider him to be the best leadoff hitter of all times. Many would consider him to be the best bunter of all times. Brett Butler was a superstar, but that wasn't always the case. The Brett Butler story is, is more what we'd consider an underdog story. And whenever Brett Butler told his story, it included words like commitment, words like tenacity, words like mom and dad. It was his mom and dad that were his biggest fans. They were the ones that said, we believe in you. You can do it. Brett Butler's story is a, an underdog story. In Jesus' day, they loved to tell the underdog story. They weren't about Brett Butler, that the underdog story, well, 
Very often it was a Moses story. Moses was born a slave and you don't get any more underdog than that. It was Moses that Pharaoh had sent out an edict that the midwives should should kill all the boy babies as soon as they were born. Well, the Bible tells us that the midwives decided that it would be better to obey God than to obey Pharaoh. So they didn't do it. Well, when Pharaoh asked the midwives, why didn't you kill all the boy babies? They said, well, these Hebrew women, they're just so strong. Before we ever get there, they've already delivered the babies. So Pharaoh sent out a second edict. And this was an edict that all the boy babies should be thrown into the Nile River at birth. Well, that's not what what Moses' mother and father did. We read this morning that his parents, for three months, protected him. And his mother made a basket of reeds. And she, she put tar on the bottom of the basket, a, a, a little boat, really. And she put him there in that little basket, there among the bulrushes in the Nile River. And her plan was that when Pharaoh's daughter came down to to take a bath in the Nile River, she would see just what a beautiful boy Moses was and she would take Moses as her own child. And that's exactly what happened. Well, she needed a nurse for this, this baby. And that's when Moses' mother, Jochebed, stepped forward and said she would do it in secret. Jochebed, Moses' mother, was, was there in Pharaoh's palace with Pharaoh's daughter all along helping to raise her own child. It's, a, it's an underdog story. It's a, it's a story that, that we don't expect. And it's a story that they would tell again and again in the early church in Jesus' day. And it says... That when Moses, which is what we read this morning, that by faith, when Moses had grown up, he chose. He chose which mother he would follow. That Moses chose the mother that gave him the things that, that meant the most. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. That Moses chose. Moses chose the mother that gave her time. Moses chose the mother who gave her time of the things that matter most. I believe that that time is the one that we value the most. Our language reflects that. In his book, Time Paradox, Philip Zimbardo says that the most used word in the English language is the word time. So I went through the Bible and I looked to see how many books of the Bible had the word time because Our language indicates what we value most. And every book in the Bible has the word time in it. I don't know if you know how unusual that is. Every book in the Bible doesn't have the word God in it. Every book in the Bible doesn't have the word faith or the word love in it. But every book in the Bible has the word time. Because time is is what we value most. Diane Loomis, in her little poem, Full of Steam Ahead, She says, if I had my child to raise all over again, I'd finger paint more and point the finger less. I'd do less correcting and more connecting. I'd take my eyes off my watch and watch with my eyes. I would care to know less and know to care more. I'd take more hikes and fly more kites. I'd stop playing serious and seriously play. I'd run through more fields and gaze at more stars. I'd do more hugging and less tugging. I would be firm less often and affirm much more. I'd build self-esteem first and the house later. I'd teach less about the power, the love of power and more about the power of love. The power of caring. The power of caring, it's, it's shown through time. Time given by a mother, given by a father, given by a grandmother or a grandfather, given by a child of God. That it's, it's how we give our time that we show what we value. Moses chose. 
He chose the mother that gave time. But not only that, Moses chose the mother that gave sacrificial love. One of the most deeply loved Georgians is Hank Aaron. You don't have to, to, to be a baseball fan to know that Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's home run record. What a lot of folks don't know is that Babe Ruth had held that record for 40 years. And when Hank Aaron was getting close to breaking Babe Ruth's record in 1973, that year, Hank Aaron received 930,000 pieces of mail in 1973. He was getting close to to breaking the record and and not all of those 930,000 pieces of mail were fan mail. Some of that mail, about 100,000 pieces of that fan mail was not fan mail, it was hate mail. And among the hate mail, there were some death threats. There were some people that that couldn't tolerate the thought of an African-American breaking Babe Ruth's record. In 1973, Hank Aaron tied Babe Ruth's home run record. And on opening day, Brave Stadium, 1974, Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's home run record. I don't know if you've seen the videos or, or maybe you remember it. There were two young men that jumped onto the field past security. They ran toward Hank Aaron as he was rounding the bases. And there was a gasp. People didn't know what their intentions were. Well, they got on either side of Hank Aaron and began patting him on the back, congratulating him for for breaking the record. That was shortly before security tackled them and hauled them off to jail. Hank Aaron made his way around the bases, and when he crossed home plate, of course, the whole team was there. The whole team plus one. It was his mother. (laughs) He, He looked down at his mother, tugging on his arm, and he said, Mama, what are you doing here? She said, baby, if they're going to get you, they've got to get me first. That's sacrificial love. A love that doesn't look out what's best for me, but a love that looks out for what's best for the other. It's the love, yes, of a mother, love of a father, love of a a grandmother, a grandfather, the love of a the children of God are called to have because that was the love that Jesus had for you and for me. He didn't do what was best for himself. On the cross, he gave his life for you and for me, not just as a symbol, but to take away the power of all those things that would destroy us. And when he rose from the grave, he gave that power to to you and me. That the power of Jesus Christ the overcomer, the power of sacrificial love. A love that wouldn't do just what's best for us, but what's best for the other. Would live through, yes, mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers, but through every child of God. The risen Christ, living through his children. Moses knew the the power of a sacrificial love. So he chose the mother that gave sacrificial love. But it doesn't stop there. That we read this morning by faith Moses when he was born was hidden for three months by his parents. Well, we read it at a cursory glance and it says by faith Moses and we think it's Moses' faith but that's not what it was at all. It was the faith of his parents who hid Moses for three months. It was that his mother, it was that his father had a, had a heart for God. And it's the, the heart for God, not fear of Pharaoh that made all the difference. Walter Rangren talks about a time in his life when he had what he called a crisis of faith. He said he was certain that he he was a little boy and he was certain that everybody in this church could see Jesus except for him. And so one day after the service, he went looking for Jesus. He got away from his mom, crawled up in the pulpit. He said Jesus wasn't there. One day during the week, his mom had him at church and 
he began to look in all the Sunday school classes, but Jesus wasn't there. During one service, they were serving Holy Communion. And he, he got an idea in his mind. He told his mom he had to, to use the restroom. His mom said, hurry back. Well, he, he slipped out of the pew and into the back of the church. And instead of going to the men's restroom, he went to the ladies' restroom. That's the one place he hadn't looked. He poked his head in and Jesus wasn't there. When he went, made his way back, on his mother's face, he could see a look of peace and joy. She had taken communion. And when he got close, he could smell something on his mother, not knowing what it was. He said, Mama, what is it? She said, shh, Walter. He said, Mama, what is it? And he got even closer. And that's when she realized what he was asking. She said, Walter, that's Jesus in me. And the truth is, for most of us, that the first place we saw Jesus was in Mama. Or it might have been Dad. Or it may have been a, a grandmother or a grandfather. Or a child of God that had a sense of, of peace and joy about them. And they took notice of you. They begin to pay attention to you. And that was the first place that you saw Jesus. A mom, a dad, a grandmother, a grandfather that took notice of you. Paid attention to you. These days, there's a lot of ugly news out there. And news notices come to us on our phone. They call to us from our watches, News notices, that ugly news notice comes through radio or television or computers. And whenever that ugly news alert comes, it tends to, to bring up fear. We begin to fret. We begin to circle the wagons and, and wring our hands. And where two or more are gathered, we, we practice and we rehearse the fear, the fretting, the wringing of our hands, the circling of our wagons. And, and this world has become a, a fearing and fretting, hand-wringing, fearful world. Did you know that Jesus brought some news? He called it good news. And it's the best news that the, that the world has ever heard. Jesus said in John 16, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. That on the cross, that's what Jesus did for you and for me. He overcome, he overcame the tribulation. He is the overcomer. He defeated all the things that would destroy us. And when he rose from the grave, he rose to live his life that we might know his peace and his joy. And his chosen news source, Mama, it's you. His chosen news source, Daddy, it's you. His cho chosen news source is grandmother, grandfather, child of God. It's you. There's a world that is longing for good news. The good news of Jesus Christ who brings peace and joy. This morning, it may be that um, you've been practicing not the peace and the joy that Jesus, the, the overcomer, gives. You've not been a news source of Jesus Christ, but instead a news source of fear and fretting, of wringing hands and encircling wagons. 
Jesus says, take courage. Take courage. I have overcome the world. And it may be you've never asked the power of the overcomer, Jesus Christ, to live in and through you. Well, I want to pray with you now. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, it may be that um, we've spent a lot of time wringing our hands, practicing fear, circling the wagons, that we've been the, the news source not of good news, but we've been practicing the bad news. That we've been complaining and fretting that there's somebody somewhere that doesn't believe like we do. Well, the chances are pretty good. There's probably someone even in our own household that doesn't believe like we do. The chances are very, very good that... Um, We don't live what we say we believe. And the good news is that on the cross, you overcame that power. When you gave your life on the cross, you took away the power of all those things that would steal our peace and the joy that comes from you. And when you rose from the grave, you rose to, to live in and through us. This morning, there may, be, there may be some folks that have never asked you to live your life through them. And today is the, the first day of good news. Or maybe that there are others that... Um, Instead of giving their, their time and sacrificial love and, and a heart for you, they've been giving complaining and fretting and fear and wringing of hands and anything but peace and joy. You have power to change us and I ask for that power now. Not for some of us, but for all of us. The moms and dads grandmoms, granddads, and the children of God. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.